Alright, test fish have been added to the system. These are called Plauduke. It's like a, uh, well, that's the Thai name. It's, they're, they're a catfish, a variety of catfish. Um, they're really, really cheap. It's like one bot per fingerling. These fingerlings are about three, three to four inches long. Uh, put them in yesterday just to get the nitrification going. I put 550 of them in here because they gave me 50 free. Um, so for 500 fish, it cost me about 15 US dollars. And they actually gave me 50 additional, so for 550 fish, it was 15 bucks. No big deal. Uh, these are all probably gonna get thrown in the pond anyways. They're trash fish as far as I'm concerned. But they do eat them here. Uh, I will not. But I tend not to eat bottom feeders at all. I just don't care for the taste. Okay, so that's that. Uh, just getting our nitrification going. These fish will all come out before the sea bass show up. And uh, here's just a kind of a topical view of all the tanks. Water's been flowing since yesterday and there seems to be all the issues are rectified. No leaks or anything like that. I will show you that I did make a couple of changes on the plumbing that were necessary. Uh, somebody recommended that I put in flush out valves. I did do that. You can see the valve on each end there. Uh, what else? Oh, the biofilters. Jim Connor is going to give me a big... I told you so. Because my head was all screwed up, I was basically trying to push the water horizontally with no head in between these swirl filters and I, I don't it's just a rookie mistake, guys. My inexperience is really shining on this build because it's a lot more difficult when you're trying to control 20,000 liters or 5,000 gallons an hour than, you know, running a little 1200 liter an hour pump in a in a small system. So I've learned a lot, just improvise and learn as I go, I'll make it work, not a big deal. But uh, by no means, uh, if I was doing this for someone else, would this be sufficient. Too many shortcomings. But in the end, it's going to be okay. So this actually works out a lot better because instead of all of the fish tank water simultaneously being pushed in sequence through tank 1, tank 2, tank 3, now all that water is divided by four different tanks and it's giving us a much better suspension time within the swirl filters. All right, and then all that water goes through the biofilters. It's moving pretty rapidly. I've got air stones in there as well. Biofilter one, the biofilter two, and then this will just be like a, I'll probably throw some filter padding in there or something. If I need more media, more biomedia, I'll, I'll throw it in there later. Uh, yeah, so here's a look at the total water flow. Uh, it's quite a bit of water, guys. Like I said, it's a 20,000 liter an hour pump. It should be 5,000 gallons an hour. Of course, we're losing some of that. But um, initially, I was using this one inch soft hose, like you see here. And it was just way too restricting on the pump. So I switched over to this clear two inch tubing. And I'll need to wrap that up in tape or something to keep the light out of it. But lots of little odds and ends that still need to be done. But the water's moving. We've got our uh, fish in there to start colonizing our bacteria. And uh, yeah, I could have just done a fishless cycle, I suppose, with ammonia, but I have a really hard time sourcing ammonia here. Um, I'd have to special order it. And for the cost of the fish, because they're so inexpensive, it didn't really make any sense to try and do a fishless cycle for me. Here's the seedlings. Uh, I think there's like 50 tomatoes there. These are the ones that I had showed you guys previously in the sponges. There's more seeds in these sponges that have yet to germinate. And the last thing, this place looks like a war zone. I need to do some cleaning. We've just been nonstop trying to get the water situated and I haven't taken time to tidy up. It looks like a Hiroshima around here. This is the poles going in for the new roof. And they're making decent progress on that. They did all this just yesterday. Well, they put these uh, poles in anyways. They had the footings and holes dug previously, so I think that'll do the job. What they'll do is they'll concrete around uh, that steel pole, filling in the existing concrete 
pole and then the whole thing gets filled in with concrete so should be plenty strong for what we're supporting that's it guys that's all that's going on around here so uh, the next step will be to start I've got to do some uh, just a few more things like maybe one day or half days worth of odds and ends on the fish getting some filter padding in place and um, like taping those clear hoses up and things like that just odds and ends and then I'll get right on to the Dutch bucket uh, PVC work I have to, I really want to take a break from PVC I'm about tired of it but I've got to drill out all the drain holes for both the towers and buckets and then as soon as I feel like I'm not going to be too much in the way of these guys I'll slap everything up and until my tomatoes are ready to transplant it doesn't really matter anyways because it would probably only take me about three days I'm speculating three days to get the bucket set up the towers will take a little bit longer I think probably about the same um, but I won't even mess with towers until I've got I won't turn the towers on until I've got a good probably 30 days with fish because I'm gonna need all that fish extract fish waste extracted from these swirl filters into the series of uh, mineralization tanks before I'm gonna have adequate nutrients to power the towers as you guys already know that all the Dutch buckets are being done hydroponically alright thanks for watching guys don't forget to subscribe and like the video and we'll see you soon